I've got to say, there's so much going on right now in announcements about AI and how all of these things are going to affect the way we work. I'm feeling the overwhelm. I don't know about you. Microsoft made another announcement about Microsoft 365 Copilot. I've actually taken longer than I usually do to digest this. The announcement video that came out was incredible, but it was just like one <laughs> punch after another, one brand new feature after another, bang, 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 in the space of about 20 minutes. I found I had to kind of pause and come back and watch it again. So I've got my head around all that. I'm going to help you get your head around it in the video. Essentially, we are bringing all of these tools that allow you to generate content with AI into the productivity tools that you use, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, Teams, Outlook, and some absolutely mind-blowing stuff about how you can keep on top of everything, especially things around how to keep on top of your emails, how to keep on top of chats and meetings and everything that's going on. Let me take you through it. I normally do a top 10 rapid fire. I'm just going to talk through all this and what I think it means, and hopefully this will help you to understand what it might mean for you as well. Let's start by talking about Copilot and the concept of what Copilot is, because it's not another product. What it is, is the terminology or the branding, if you like, that Microsoft is using to refer to all of the tools that you can use to generate content with AI across the Microsoft product set. So this is bringing AI into those tools that you're already using, like Word, Teams, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook, and we're going to go through and have a look at each one of those in turn here and what that means. Conceptually, it's more than that, though. It's not just bringing it into those things, which it absolutely is, but it's bringing it to the context of what you're working with. So the Microsoft Graph is where you're storing all of your context and information and everything you're doing, all of the other documents and interactions and chats and all of those things you're having are in the Microsoft Graph and then applying this large language model to it, so ChatGPT. And these three things together essentially mean now that with Microsoft Copilot, you work where you're already working in those applications in the context of the work you're doing and everything you've done before, and you're applying this AI technology in that context. So for business users, when you have to sit down and write a proposal or create a slide deck in relation to something or reply to a business email or collaborate in teams about what's going on, all of that information you've done, everything you've done in the past is stored on the Microsoft Graph. And now all of these things are coming together. I'm going to take you through and show you how all of this works one by one in each of these applications. But if you're in that business context now of needing to write proposals or create documents of any kind, where do you see what's possible here? So we start in Microsoft Word. If you've played around with something like ChatGPT, the idea of putting in a prompt and saying draft a proposal for this or write me an essay for that is probably familiar to you. The difference now here is that we can go inside Word and say refer to another file. So you'll see here that I've got meeting notes already inside OneNote. I know I do this if I'm talking to someone, I'm making notes in OneNote. And then the work after the meeting to come back and say, draft me a proposal based on what happened there. I can actually now select that and also pick out some other documents. So let's also include product offers from this product roadmap. So the examples here are showing you other Word documents and OneNote, but you can draw on, you can see there's a PowerPoint there. There's a loop component there. If you're not familiar with that purple icon, we are going to come to that one a little bit later. Excel spreadsheets, all sorts of different things in here. And then we get this. So this is creating that content, but drawing on all of those other documents and notes that you already have. Doesn't end there though, because now you've got your content, but when you're doing a proposal document or a document of some kind in a business context, chances are you want to bring in your own branding. You want to bring in something um, in terms of the images and so on you're using. I've seen a lot of people like in theory, it's easy to start with a template, but the amount of work that people put into formatting that and getting it right and not messing up the template is very real. Now, one of the core principles around these tools, around Copilot coming into all of these tools we use is that most people only use like 10 or 20 percent of the capabilities of things like Word and PowerPoint. So bringing Copilot in here to assist, it knows how to use all this stuff. So now what we're going to do is say, make it look like this other proposal that we've got in there and pull images from this PowerPoint document and boom, it's done that. I a lot of people couldn't do this amount of formatting with columns and the, the nice things. This is just, you know, happens within a couple of clicks in there. 
From there, you can ask it to do more of the work for you. So, so far, we've drafted the proposal, drawing on documents and notes that we've already made. We've formatted it based on other things we've already done in the past and bringing in images. So now what we can do is to say, I would like you to write a summary or how else can I improve this document and add frequently asked questions and it will write it for you. So then in the context of everything else that's going on here, it's writing all of those things. Now, obviously you're gonna to need to check all of this first. And this is the other key principle here. In addition to using more of the features of these tools is that you're in charge. So none of this AI is automatically saving and forcing you to do anything. Very, very clear in the way that Microsoft presents all of this stuff is that you remain in control. This is your first draft. This is getting you somewhere without having to start with that blank piece of paper. So you've got all of this here. Obviously, it needs a thorough review, but you can use the tools as well to refine it. But compared with spending hours mucking around with a template and opening multiple documents and finding all of these things and copying them, pasting them in, bringing it all in in a nicely formatted document based on the stuff you've already done, in the matter of a few clicks is just absolutely an amazing starting point. And you'll see along the bottom there, we've got these buttons to say, keep it, adjust it, regenerate. So all of those tools that keep you in control of what you want to do. Now that's creating a Word document. What about now I've done this proposal, but I need to present it to my customer and I want to use PowerPoint. Again, this is a tool that most people don't know how to use most of. And imagine if I could come in and create, you can see where I'm going here, a PowerPoint deck based on that proposal. How often does that happen? Incidentally, it goes the other way around. You can create the Word document from PowerPoint as well, but you've submitted a proposal to a customer, you've written something up, and now I wanna create a PowerPoint from that. There it is. So we're actually taking that Word document and all of those images that are in there, and now we've got, again, first draft of a PowerPoint deck. So maybe we want to add some more content we go through here and this all looks good, but I can go in here and say, add a slide about the cost benefits of sustainable materials. And it's created this frankly, quite beautifully designed slide. I need to go through here and check some of the other content that's a bit wordy, make this slide more visual and move the text into the speaker notes. This is something I've done quite a lot manually is grab that and you know, you want less is more on your PowerPoint slides, but I wanna keep all those things as speaker notes and put it in there. There's the result of that. What about animations? How, how long do you spend? I know I do fiddling around with animations. I want the images to come on the screen in different ways. I think there are a lot of people who just don't know how to use animations at all or don't have time for it. So now we can just say, add animations to this slide and it will actually go through and put all of those in there and you can get it to generate your speaker notes for you. So now again, in a matter of a few clicks, whichever one you've done first, your Word document or your PowerPoint, document, you can use that to create the other one. So my end to end proposal situation here is to start with I've taken heaps of notes in a OneNote. I've got past templates. I've used that to create my Word document and then I've used that Word document to create my PowerPoint deck. The productivity savings here are amazing. I do start to wonder about what's going to happen as we go forward where organizations who do RFPs and things like that, is everyone now going to be asking for an RFP with an AI generated uh, request? Is everyone going to be sending back their responses using AI? There's a lot of work that goes into making proposals and making responses, especially around those tender type processes. This is going to be really interesting to see if or how that changes that. It certainly takes a lot of the work out of it. This should make that whole process a whole lot more efficient. But uh, at what point do we just get AI requests and AI submissions going back and forth? That'll be, um, <laughs> this is going to be a really interesting space to watch. Excel. Now we've got within uh, Power Platform, the Power BI, which allows you to do a whole lot of analytics and so on. But watch what you can do in Excel now, because obviously this is still the most used reporting tool in the world. So typically we might start something like this. Here's my data, right? In all of those columns, that's great, but I need to understand it. And I think what a lot of people do is slice and dice and filter. Maybe if you're a bit more advanced, you've got a pivot table and you can do that. I know people who are good with pivot tables and adding charts and things. But again, I think most people probably don't even get that far or can't get much further than that. So this is again, an instance of Copilot really lifting the ability of everyone to use more of the capabilities of the product and to help you step through a problem here. Analyze this quarter's business results and summarize three key trends. Boom, there they are. 
Now, everywhere again, it's transparent. You can click explain and it will tell you how it's come up with those things. So you want to do that common sense check. Always do a common sense check on any AI tool. <laughs> I've done some things already where you just go. Mm, to, so, you know, use these things as first drafts. Don't just kind of take them blindly. So then we can go through and say, add some more analysis. Let's see what's going on. So it can actually show me a breakdown of what's going on. And now what it's done is created another sheet in my spreadsheet and given me a chart and a breakdown by product. Now I could manually do all of these things with pivot tables. They wouldn't look as nice as that. Certainly wouldn't get the chart and two tables like that in a matter of two clicks. So now I still want to know more about what's going on. So I can ask another question. Let's get it first to apply some color coding to the table. So there's conditional formatting done for you. And what else is going on? I need to understand more about what's happening here to create a model for growth. What would happen if this hadn't been the case or that hadn't been the case? It goes through a couple of seconds, creates the model, produces a model for you to say, this is what would have happened if this growth rate had been equal to that growth rate. And this is how I made that model. So now instead of just, you know, I want to filter and sort my sales figures and view them in a pivot table and create a chart, all of that has become a whole lot easier. But this what if scenario, what if that product line had sold at the same rate as this other one, what would that look like? And it's created that for us, given us the explanation of how it's created it. Oh, by the way, would you like a chart with that? <laughs> Thanks very much. And so then we end up with this incredible kind of screen of all of these different bits and pieces that have been created. Now, what about email? Because honestly, email is one of those things that, you know, we've got our proposals done, uh, we've analyzed the sales figures and so on, but hands up if you really like waiting through email, if you've got, you know, hundreds or thousands of things in your inbox and you just can't keep on top of it, which is a really common thing. So this is a new feature, a way of using Copilot in Outlook, which is this catch up with Copilot. And you'll see what it's done here is given you a summary of what's going on. Now, I've already seen a few things starting to come through. When I look at Outlook, it'll say, you know, I can give you a um, Viva is in there giving me a summary and reading my emails and so on. But this is a whole other level now of here's the catch up. Here's what I've missed. And we're going to see this. Keep watching. I've got some stuff around how this is working in Teams, which brings together even more than just your email. So here's what you can need to catch up on. And I can go, all right, let's start the catch up. Here's the first email. Shay is asking if you can present at the supply chain all hands tomorrow. So that's cutting straight to the chase of what the ask is. And then I can go through and click next, next, next and have a look at those. You can also do this in the mobile application. Here's the conversation summary. So if you've got a long thread and I find this, if you've been away, if you've been kind of at a you know meeting all day or away for a bit or just haven't kept up with your emails, what's going on with the conversation thread? And there it all is there as a summary of what's happening. And now we start to bring in this concept again of generating a response, but not just please write me a response to this person, please write something in and include the projected sales from this Excel document or include this other thing. So that same concept we saw in Word of being able to refer back to those other documents you've got and bring them in to help you generate that email content. All of these things we do, all of these things we spend our time on every day of having to find information. This is this is what changes right now, because if I'm writing this email back to someone, oh, yeah, I've got that thing in that Excel spreadsheet and I need to refer back to my notes there and I can't remember where I put this other thing. All of these things are just available to you and to pull that data in there. This is just going to be incredibly efficient in terms of reusing the work that you've already done. And this is this important part of the Microsoft Graph being part of all of this. It's not operating just as generating content on its own. This is generating content based on the things that you've already got going on in your business. And there you go. Look at that. Like now we've got the information in there, the chart in there, good to go. And then the other features you might have seen before, similar to what we do in ChatGPT, make it shorter, make it longer, make it more professional, make it a poem, <laughs> be an interesting one. Now, if you think all that's good, let's have a look at the really mind blowing part. That's like level one. When you come to collaboration, right, and you've got all of these tools available to you 
for collaboration with teams, you know, your chats and your meetings, as soon as you're having meetings online and recording them and you've got the transcription and so on, you think about how much data is there, the amount of interaction and content that's going on and how hard it can be to keep up with all of that and to find things in all of that and to use it effectively. So watch this. First of all, we start in Outlook and there's a new option here if you can't attend a meeting. Yes, no or follow. Inform the organizer that you cannot attend the meeting and get the recap. Now, this is again, if you think this through, this is great if one person can't join a meeting and 10 other people are there. But if everyone starts going, oh, you know what, I'm just going <laughs> to I'm just going to follow the meeting and get the recap. It might not be a recap to have. So these these tools is going to be really interesting to see how people start behaving with them. We apply that human behavior over the top of it and, and watch what happens. But anyway, going with what the technology is going to be able to do, I'm going to follow this meeting. So this is what I get afterwards. Now, this is all dependent on it obviously being a Teams meeting where everyone's participating and you are you know, getting that recording and transcript and so on. But what you'll be able to get, there we go, it was a 48 minute meeting. The content was the Prosware proposal. So that's a, a, a slide deck. Uh, there's a summary of what was said in the meeting. Here are the notes and here are the tasks. Now, if you miss a meeting and presuming that everyone is still attending meetings and you just miss one occasionally, at the moment, I. Everyone asks for meetings to be recorded at the moment. I, you know, this is something two or three years ago. No one ever recorded meetings. We just sit and talk to each other. Now everyone says, can you record the meeting because somebody couldn't make it. That happens daily in, in, in the work that I do. So now I, I wonder how many people ever go back and actually watch the recording. I know that I come back, I miss a meeting. It's nice to know the recording's there. But in reality, I've got all of the other meetings and the other things I've got. If I've missed it, chances are I was double booked or I have to catch up on some other things. This, instead of sitting down and watching, like finding another 48 minutes in my day, and many meetings might not be you know, critical to me to see what's going on, this is, this is incredibly useful. But wait, there's more. <laughs> so now let's say I care a lot about Proswear. Maybe this is my customer and I want to see what's going on. If I'm Samantha, I've been at mentioned in this scenario. So um, follow up with this. So, OK, there's an action point for me out of this meeting and I've been tagged in it. So now I can bring Copilot in to the context of what's going on there and say, tell me more about what was discussed. Were any other customers discussed? What other solutions were discussed in the meeting? And here is the list of what happens, importantly, with a reference to the transcript. I've played around with the chat GPT capability in Bing search, and it does this as well. This is very different from just taking uh, chat GPT out of context is that it's giving you the answers with these citations, these little references, and you can click on them and see what's going on. So this is actually saying here are the other solutions discussed. But again, applying your common sense and your good sense to anything that AI generates. Here's the reference of where it came from. You want to read the original transcript here just in case it's misinterpreted or there's some other subtlety in what's going on. So you've got all of that sitting in there. So I've missed out on that meeting. Now I'm caught up. Now I'm able to interrogate anything else that went on. That's a much better way to catch up than sitting and watching a recording after the fact. Level up again now, live meetings. So all of this can be done in real time and we can bring Copilot into a Teams meeting. So now I join the meeting late. This image is actually blurred out. That's not you. <laughs> I've taken all of these screenshots out of the Microsoft launch announcement and they've done this to focus on the Copilot part on the side. So I've joined the meeting and I'm 10 minutes late. And so I can just ask it to recap the meeting so far. Boom, 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 boom. Here's what's happened in real time. Now, what are the details? What else is going on? It can actually start to do more with this. So if you're late, you can catch up, all good. But let's say you're there you're throughout the meeting. You can start to ask it other questions. What is the group feeling about this? How's this going? I'm, I'm really interested to play around with this. So this is picking up some sentiment analysis, presumably. It's picking up on you know, what's going on between, the, between the, the conversation. Again, you'll notice it says one reference there. So it's picking up where it's finding that information. This is a really interesting one, though. So far, so far, we've gone recap what's happened. Great. Summarize how things are going in the conversation. OK, what questions are unresolved? So here are some other things that's picked up to make sure you've covered everything and suggestions based on what's going on. It's like having another. It's almost like having an assistant in the meeting with you. 
I'm fascinated to see how how real this will be and, and, and what that will mean for meetings. And again, hopefully it's not every meeting with everyone turning up 10 minutes late saying, what was the recap? And the recap is everyone was asking <laughs> where everybody else is. <laughs> so then this is where I, I, this is the most exciting part for me, staying on top of it all, right? So you've got all these emails coming in, you've been in all these meetings, you've got all these Teams chats. I know I, the job that I do is working across a lot of different things. I'm in and out of this document or that project or this proposal or whatever. I'm working across a really big breadth of things. And that very real challenge of, oh, hey, Lisa, can you help us out with this? And I need to get across what's going on quickly or things have progressed and I've been on some other kind of workshop or whatever for a day and I need to catch up. That's a scenario that you know many of us would face. So first of all, inside a chat. So now there's a chat that's gone on. Let's say I've been out doing something else for the day and there's you know dozens and dozens of messages in this chat thread. Summarize what I've missed. Thank you very much, Copilot, because I don't necessarily, if you're in a conversation thread and participating in it, awesome. If you come back after the fact, that's really tedious and kind of hard to track back through. So there we go. There's the summary. Awesome. Thank you very much. Next up, in the bottom of my chat, I can bring in Copilot and ask it to do something else for me. So create a status update of this from email conversations this week. Just not not from the Teams chat, from the from email, right? This is this is this stuff with the graph, it's all one platform. So I'm in Teams, here's a chat about something, but what's going on in email? And it can actually go through and find the relevant email conversations, give me the status update with the references and the links to where it's got all of that information from. I'm a little bit speechless, to be honest. As I said at the start, this is this is I've taken a little while to digest this. So it's actually gone and found all of that. All of these scenarios here of just you don't have to go back and find all that information manually and miss something. It's bringing it in. Again, you're in control. I'm going to click insert and choose to use that or edit it or change it. I can view those references and make sure that it's all OK as well. Now, still not done. <laughs> still more. Microsoft Loop. If you're not uh, familiar with Microsoft Loop, this is something that's in Teams that you can use. It's actually also its own standalone app that allows you to do real time collaboration on a list or, or a table of some kind. So here's an example here. Let's say that we are working on a customer deal together and we've got different product pricing and things. So this is a table sitting inside Teams and you can see SP and CS, the initials there. There are two people live editing that at the same time. So these loop components in Teams allow you to create these kinds of lists or tasks or to do or whatever and people can come in and, and collaborate them in real time. We actually use it for something uh, where where I work for a frivolous thing like let's create a shopping list for things we need to buy for like office supplies or kitchen supplies or whatever who wants to order what while I'm putting in an order and everyone in real time can just go in and add it to the list just in teams in a chat it's incredibly useful so let's bring copilot into this scenario so we've always got these loop components that are allowing us to collaborate in real time we bring copilot in here and Again, Copilot is talking to all of the other documents that we've got. So let's add to this series of Microsoft Loop components the top selling products and categories from Prosware quarter one sales and point it to that spreadsheet that we were looking at earlier. And boom, there we go. Now we've got a loop component. So it's put, it's created the product and the category and pulled that from the spreadsheet in a matter of seconds. And then because this is a collaborative thing, someone could come along and add a column, but you can just tell Copilot. So this other person has come along, add a discount offer, use 20% recycled materials and 10% for other, and it knows. It <laughs> can figure that out and do it for you. So everyone can go in here and then you've got that thread of who's asked for what and what's been done to all of those things. So all of this stuff in Teams, and honestly, I'm still not done. There's more because we're about to bring the CRM into it as well. So now I've generated my documents from all of my other content and then keeping on top of things. I've been able to go in here and catch up on a meeting that I missed with all of those things in there, ask Copilot questions about it. I've been able to summarize all of the emails from the previous week to tell me what's going on with something. And I've been able to collaborate by bringing this in here and have it draw something from Excel to create a, a real time collaboration list inside the Teams chat. Now, 
If you're in a sales environment, and a lot of these tools are useful for creating proposals and documents and things for selling with, Viva Sales connects a lot of this stuff to your CRM, your Customer Relationship Management System. And this works with Dynamics 365, which is the Microsoft CRM, as well as Salesforce. And a lot of organizations are using that. So step one here, <laughs> now I'm in my Teams meeting. And if I've got Viva Sales connected to my CRM, first thing I'm getting inside the Teams meeting, so I join the meeting, let's say here I could be the seller or I could be a, a manager or a colleague who's been asked to support this meeting and I might not have all the context or I've jumped from one meeting to another and I haven't had a chance to prepare, you know, half an hour beforehand. How many times do we do that? Like that context switching is very real. So I've jumped on this call Here's my summary, right? It's showing it here from Salesforce. Same thing if you're using Dynamics 365. So here is, it's connected to a particular opportunity. So that's what we're talking about. Here are the related contacts. Here are the other open opportunities and here's the account. So all of that is available to me. Now what I can do, very similar to what we saw earlier with catching up on the Teams meeting and so on, let me catch up on this. So, you know, the, the person has started the call and I'm going to catch up on what's going on here. It's giving me the summary again with the references to where that's come from. And that's pulling that directly from my customer relationship management system data. There we go. Now, what if I want to know about the competitor? someone mentions a competitor on the call, get competitor information because you don't necessarily have all this stuff in your head. And this is pulling that from your sales materials. So the more you're populating your organization's data and the more you've got all of that saved in your CRM, in your documents and in your collaboration and your chats and your emails, you think of how much information is there. And now it's drawing on all of that. And here is the summary of what we know that's going on there. This is particularly useful if you've got a piece in your CRM on competitors and multiple people are adding information in there. You might know what's in your head, but in terms of being able to collaborate and bring that in in real time in the meeting, by the way, this is happening. And then at the end of the meeting, please summarize the meeting for me. Action points, open items, questions detected, boom, safe to Salesforce or safe to Dynamics. And there's your summary of the meeting. So all of that work around finding the information, preparing for the meeting, being able to be the most up to date with what your organization knows about the competitors, summarizing their meeting afterwards and putting it back in your CRM. Who likes doing that? No one likes to, no one, people don't do it. It's an immense frustration of every sales manager ever that that information isn't in there. Copilot now can do it for you and single click just save it back because it's already connected up to that account and opportunity information in there. And then you want to send it to the customer. Let's follow up with a proposal. We're getting right back to where we started from now. Follow up with a proposal, draft this. It's going to bring out the information that we got from that Teams meeting, insert. And of course, if you prefer, right back to where we started with Word and so on, you can come in and bring in other documents to help you with that. One more thing. Look at this. Once the customer replies to you and says, OK, yes, thank you, we'd like to go ahead, it detects that and gives you, remember the conversation summary in Outlook of what's going on and suggests that you close as one in your CRM system. And there's your Viva Sales panel on the side of Outlook with all of the information and you can click close as one. You do not even have to go into Salesforce to do any of this or into Dynamics to do any of this. What we're seeing here is bringing all of these tools or the underlying data around what's going on with your customer relationships and opportunities into Outlook and into Teams. So as a seller here, I've done all of these things and have access to all of that information. I haven't even opened. Did you even see Salesforce on the screen? I haven't even opened my CRM. It's all just it's all just there. Now, what if I want to automate something? Now, this is getting into Power Platform. If you're not familiar with Power Automate, this is a tool that allows you to do a trigger and action style of workflow, making it easier. Again, making those tools more accessible to everyone. So this is a drag and drop interface where if you know what you're doing, you can go in and say, you know, if this thing happens, here's a trigger and I choose my options and then here's my flow of the actions. Now, natural language, create a private Teams channel and customer service when an urgent support issue from Prosware is received. So now we're next level. We've won the deal. I want to make sure that if any urgent issues come in, this is getting flagged in Teams and marking it for the right people. So there's my natural language query. I don't even know anything about how to use this and I can do that and it will 
generate a suggestion. So you'll see what it's doing here is saying when a support issue comes through, this is coming through, say, from your customer service system, then get the account contact. So this is working across different systems. The new support issue is coming in from a Microsoft Dynamics customer service system. The action is getting the contacts from the Salesforce system. Then it's getting my profile from the Microsoft Office area, finding a Teams channel, creating it and, and so on. Like it's connecting to about five different things in here and working across both Microsoft and non-Microsoft systems if that's what you want to do. And then it creates this, but we've brought Copilot in here. So normally with your flow, you'd be able to say, yep, when this happens, do those things, create the channel, all of those things, add the message. But with Copilot now, how about we summarize and find things? So these are actions that we've got in here and I didn't even need to create them. After the channel is created, post a summary of the support issue that requests help, tag the contacts for departments most likely to be relevant. So now we are automating the collaboration of the support, but as somebody, I don't need to be technical to be doing this. I've asked it a natural language question. It's created that for me. I've asked it to enhance it. And Copilot has thankfully, helpfully added, summarize the issue with GPT, determine the relevant contacts and post the message to the channel. Thanks very much. This is what happens. So now an issue has been raised and in Teams, it's created a private channel underneath that customer. And there is all of the details summarized by ChatGPT and it's found the people and tagged them and then someone's jumped in there to see what's going on. So there's a lot, as I said at the start, there's a, there's a lot here. But essentially now the work we all do of having to find information, re-key, re-summarize information, pull pieces together should just become so much more productive. The ability to keep up with what's going on when you've got so much going on should be so much more productive as well. I am absolutely you know, fascinated to see how this works in reality. When and how much, watch this space, I'll tell you when I know. What tends to happen is we get these announcements and then the details of those things come through. But this is moving at an absolutely rapid rate and make no mistake, this is one of the biggest things that, that <laughs> you'll see. All of these things that we do in the shape of our everyday work just suddenly got completely changed. We've all got a virtual assistant inside all of these tools all of the time. And let's see how we go with that. So stay tuned, stay, stay subscribed. I am doing content on this to analyze it and keep it up to date and to test it out and play with it. If you've got any thoughts, ideas about where you think this might head, your favorite things here, let me know in the chat below. And uh, let's all watch this space and watch our worlds change together. Thank you so much for watching.